what you see on the screen are two different Android devices. This one on the left, we're going to pretend is being used by the teacher. And this one on the right, we're going to pretend is being used by one of the students in the class. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this DNS app on both devices now. And here in the teacher version of the app, the first thing we need to do is establish a class code by pressing this button. This is the class code that's been assigned to our class. Notice as the student, you do not need to press the new class code button. There are two exceptions to this. First of all, if you're doing this course on your own online and you don't have a teacher or classmates, you'll need to press this button to generate a unique class code. Alternatively, if you missed this lesson in class and are doing this as a homework makeup assignment, you will also need to press this class code button to generate a unique class code. Now this button over here called Assign Bot allows you to create some robot users in case you're working on this assignment alone. To demonstrate this, I'll create a half a dozen robots that we can use. And you can see that these robot users have now been added to the network. These robot users are not very smart. If you send them messages, they will not reply. However, you can still look up their IP addresses using the DNS, which is the main point of this exercise. I'm now going to log in on both devices. So first, as the teacher, I'm going to log in as a Pixel, because I'm using a Google Pixel for the teacher phone. And you can see it welcomes me by assigning me uh, a login of Pixel 20. That's me right here. And this is my IP address, 3.46. These other devices are on my router. Uh, we know their login IDs, but currently do not know their IP addresses. That's why they're marked as a question mark. Now on the student side, we want to make sure that we use the same class code that was set up by our teacher. The class code is right here, and I'm going to enter that in this field so that I can communicate with the teacher. So I'm going to enter the same class code, and I'll just log in as Dan. You can see that my uh, login has been assigned as Dan57, and you can see that I am right here, and my IP address is 2.26. You can see only the people on your router on the main screen. However, if you press this peer button, it will show you all the people that are on your network, not just the ones that are on your router. Let's talk a little bit about how we can use the DNS to get IP addresses. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to get the IP address for this user, Lily13. In the to field, I would put the address of the DNS. In this case, it's 99.01 and in the message field I would put a get and then I would put in lily13 and then I would hit the send button and you can see that first I get a acknowledgement that my message was sent and then down here in the receive message log you can see that the DNS has replied and is telling me that Lily's IP address is 2.15. Notice that the 2.15 is also shown on the screen now because it is known to me. Similarly, I can also ask the DNS for the IP address of Amazon. Let's do that. Once again, I'm going to put in the IP address for the DNS and I'll say get Amazon. Once again, I get the message sent successfully, and the DNS tells me that the Amazon's IP address is 98.76. Notice that it's showing up here now because this IP address is now known to me. I can buy things from Amazon, which is one of the activities you're going to be doing today. So to do that, I'm going to send a message to Amazon. This time I'm going to put Amazon's IP address in the to field, and I'm going to buy some shoes. When I say send, you can see that the Amazon robot responds by telling me that I bought shoes. Now let's talk a little bit about how we can communicate between two 
people on the network. Let's, for example, say that I wanted to send a message to the teacher who happens to be at this login ID of Pixel 20. If I click on the Peers button, I see that Pixel 20 is one of the users on the network. Now some of these users are robots and some of them are human users. We don't know which are which, but we know that the Pixel 20 is our teacher. So let's click on that one. And you can see that a message has already been set into the queue here where I'm going to ask the DNS to get me the IP address for my teacher. And when I send that, the DNS responds and returns the IP address 3.46. Notice that 3.46 happens to be the IP address of the teacher. Let's send the teacher a message now. So I'm going to put 3.46 in the to address and let's just say hello. I'm going to send this message and you can see that the message has been successfully sent and a few seconds later the message will now show up on the teacher's receive message log. Likewise, the teacher can send messages to the students. And after a couple of seconds, you can see that the message shows up on the message log for Dan. So that, in a nutshell, gives you a brief summary of how to use the DNS widget. Before we leave this tutorial, we want to mention two potential errors, both of which are rare, but could happen if, for example, your app has trouble communicating with the internet, you will see the error shown on the left. Likewise, if there is something wrong with the Tiny Web Database service, you are likely to see the error on the right. Although these errors have proven to be rare, when they do occur, your teacher may need to teach this lesson on a different day.